Hello everyone, my name is Brant Kudrowski and this Organic Chemistry Lab video covers an organic structure drawing and modeling experiment. Part 2. This next section of the experiment introduces the concept of longest carbon chain analysis to help identify and characterize and classify molecules. It's the same concepts that get used in naming organic molecules, and if you've been introduced to naming, you'll find this really familiar. If not, and this is new, then that's great. This is a way to look at molecules and compare them, and it involves finding their longest carbon chain, that is, the longest continuous path of carbon starting from one end of the molecule through to the other end in an unbroken chain from one end to the other. Often these chains don't follow a straight line. They'll wiggle and zig and zag around the structure. The point is, try all different paths that you can to try to find a route that makes the longest possible path through. There's an example here below that shows a couple of different Lewis structures. In this case, we've got a longest carbon chain in the left molecule that's seven carbons long. And in the right molecule, we have another example of a seven carbon chain. And you can see here they're not straight lines, but they both have a seven carbon longest chain. So that is something they have in common. If you number the longest carbon chain, you can also learn something about the things that are attached to it. For example, in the left structure, we're going to start in the upper left corner of the molecule and number from 1 to 2 to 3 to 4 to 5, 6, and 7. We're starting here from the end of the chain that's closest to the first branch point. So it makes sense to start from the upper left rather than the right-hand side because it gives the lower number to the first substituent, the only substituent, which is a CH3 group. It's important to do that consistently when you're comparing molecules to make sure you get the same result. So this is a seven carbon chain that has a CH3 group in the three position. If we take a look at the structure on the right, we can do the same thing. Here, we'll start numbering on the lower part of the molecule, one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. We're starting down here because then the branch gets a number three, which is a lower number than if we would start in the upper left-hand corner. So here we have a longest carbon chain that's also seven carbons long and also has a CH3 group in the three position. So since these molecules have the same longest carbon chain and the same groups at the same positions, they're the same molecule. Initially, looking at these things, they don't look very similar, but remember molecules can be posed in a lot of different ways and it's easy to manipulate them, to rotate them, and make them look superficially different. But actually, Actually, a lot of times it's the same molecule. We're going to practice that down here with some examples below. So in question 4a, it asks for each structure below a through f, find the longest continuous carbon chain of atoms. If there's more than one equivalent longest carbon chain, just pick one and circle it. Next, number the carbon atoms in the longest carbon chain sequentially, just like you did in the examples above, starting from the end of the chain that's closest to the first branch point, and then compare them. So what I'll do with you is go through a couple of these and then the rest you can do on your own. I'll start with structure C. I'm going to find the longest carbon chain through it. I'll start in the upper left hand corner of the molecule and work my way down through the molecule and then take a left at the branch point here because it makes a longer carbon chain. Then if I number that, as we've done in the other examples, we're going to start numbering from the upper left hand corner because that's going to give the lowest number to the first branch point. That'll give a 3 to the CH3 group and then the CH2 CH3 group will get a 4. To describe this molecule in words, it's a seven carbon longest chain with a CH3 group in the three position and a CH2 CH3 group in the four position. Now, there are a number of other molecules in this list that we could look at. I'm just gonna go and take a look at structure E here and go through it the same way we did with structure C. We start at one end of the molecule and try to work our way through to find the longest carbon chain. I'm just gonna start in the lower right. You can start anywhere you want. The important thing is, is that you go through the molecule and find the longest path. So if I start here, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, and I could either go left or down here. It doesn't really matter. You get the same result either way. This is an example of an equivalent longest carbon chain. So I'll just go to the left and there's carbon number seven. So this is a seven carbon longest chain. Now, as far as numbering this, what we'll need to do is to uh, start at the end closest to the first branch point. So this is gonna be the left side because if we give the left carbon a number one, then the first branch point occurs at the number two position. That would be a CH3 group. Then there's three and four and five and six. 
and 7. This is a molecule that has a 7 carbon longest chain and it has CH3 groups in the 2, 3, and 4 positions. Now that is not the same as structure C. These molecules are clearly different and if you look through the list of molecules here there is another one that's like E and that's what you're asked to do in the next part of the question is after you've identified the longest carbon chains and numbered them the next part of the question asks you to identify identical pairs of molecules and list them with letters. So in other words, if you find a structure that's the same as E, write E and whatever structure it is, whatever letter it is, to indicate that that's a pair of identical structures. There are two pairs like that. In this question, you're asked to find them. This next question deals with drawing isomers, and it asks you to find all the unique ways to build molecules with formulas C5H12 and C6H14. The hint says try building models of just the carbon skeletons of your answers below and compare them. This will allow you to rotate them and quickly tell if they're the same. Remember, molecules that can be rotated and superimposed are the same. We're looking for unique types of each. There are three unique isomers of C5H12 and I'm asking you to draw them as skeletal structures. I'll go through this question with the model kit. I've got five carbons here and I'm going to hook them together in a row, which is the simplest way to imagine connecting them. When you count the open valencies on carbon, you'll see there's room for 12 hydrogens, which is the number we need. That means that there can't be any double bonds or rings in this molecule because then you wouldn't have enough places to put all the hydrogens. Remember, rotating the molecule or rotating about any of its single bonds doesn't change its identity. This molecule can be posed a lot of different ways that look superficially different, but really are the same molecule. I'm going to illustrate a few of these. If you get skeletal structures that look like any of these representations, you have just found the same molecule, a 5-carbon chain with no branching. To find a unique structure, you're going to have to explore different connectivities for these carbons. You're going to have to pull a carbon off the end and find a different place to put it. If you put this carbon in the middle of the chain someplace, now we have one branch. We have a four carbon chain with a branch in the middle. That can be rotated into several different conformations that look slightly different but really represent the same molecule. To generate another unique molecule, we're going to have to again change the connectivity of this molecule. We'll pluck a CH3 group off the end and introduce another branch in the middle. This molecule is the third unique isomer of C5H12. It's a three carbon chain with two branches, two CH3 groups in the middle. You can use the same strategy now to answer question 5B and find the unique isomers of C6H14. 